what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out john cena on brock lesnar's squash match at SummerSlam 2014. now i definitely want to check this out because i've always wanted to know how did john cena feel about being the one getting squashed in the way that he got squashed i, I i've always wanted to know his personal thoughts on it how did they even talk about structuring the match if there was a conversation was it just a hey brock just go out there and throw me around on my neck the entire time i'm sure the crowd won't expect it because none of us expected this people thought okay we kind of figured brock was gonna win you know and uh you know become the new champion but we didn't think john cena was going to get sent to the gulags for it and this is before the gulags was a thing so i definitely wanted to check this out uh this is also on not sound clips man we've been checking them out for the past couple of days appreciate everyone that's been asking me to check out some of these different uh clips uh that john cena has been uh you know kind of talking about certain things and let's get right into this one i'm interested i can set an interesting case because brock hit a different level as a <clears throat> you know spectator for me First, he beat the streak. Yeah. And then he killed you. Yeah. yeah. At the SummerSlam after. And after that, it was like Brock kills everybody. For you, who's a guy who's like, tell me what you want me to do and I'm going to make the best out of it. When you find out here's the plan, Brock's going to kill you. And then Brock wins. Yeah. And that's the story. Are you going, huh, that's the story? Or are you like, okay, it's time to make Brock. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I like how John Cena's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, him beating the, the streak. I think the original plan was him beating the streak and then Daniel Bryan and and uh, Brock were supposed to have a match at SummerSlam that year and Daniel Bryan was going to drop it. Obviously, he was going to drop it. But I think that was the plan. Daniel Bryan was going to hold the belt all the way to SummerSlam and then he was going to drop it to Brock, which I think would have been a crazy situation. And I'm sure they would have had more of a wrestling match, but it would have had Brock come out on top uh, in this in this situation. Um, but it would have been very interesting because it would have been the David and Goliath <laughs> situation. But this time, Brock, you know, Brock wasn't going to lose. No matter who it was, Brock wasn't going to lose. He beat the streak. He's going to become the champion at some point. But Daniel Bryan ended up getting injured, had to relinquish the titles, and it was a whole bunch of things. So I still have that perspective is I wasn't just – here's the great thing. I'm using Brock as an example only because it, it fits the narrative. Brock was taken from OVW and pushed into being champion immediately. I was given an opportunity at the beginning and then became enhancement talent. And even when I re-identified myself as a hip-hop artist or a rapper – I was an enhancement talent. So I had like a two-year understudy of this is your job. This is the story. Arn Anderson, I remember. It's just not your night, kid. You, the story is for this. Mm. So I have great equity in like my piece is to make this interesting. Brock is one of the most giving performers when it's his time. And he will make anyone look great. I know. I know. I know. Dub will never give Brock credit, but this is coming from someone's objective and, you know, has some type of knowledge of the wrestling business and in its history. I can always, and I will always say this about him, and, you know, Dub will never agree on this, but objectively, and when there's a situation when it's time for Brock to put someone over and it's very, very slim or to have them look good, Brock will do it. He's probably the best seller WWE has. He will sell for you and make you look like a million bucks. That's the one thing I can always say. With his matches, especially with smaller opponents, he will sell. He will he will fly all over the place to make you look good because he knows if he goes out there and squashes you, then what's the point? What what's the point? You know what I'm saying? So it, it got it's all about being a wrestler is, you know, getting, you know, looking good in your moves and, and what you bring to the table, but you also got to be able to make sure your opponent looks good. And Brock, when he's in, when he's into some stuff and into a feud or a match, he will do what he can to make you look good and sell and bump for you. So I, I, I got to be objective here and give respect there. 
but it's still time for him to hang it up. <laughs> but I remember uh, Brock being like, hey, you know, I had dinner with Steve Austin last night, and we came up with this idea where I just start suplexing you and don't stop and then beat you. Wow, like, so that came from him in Stone Cold? That's crazy. <laughs> it worked, though. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, we both collectively agreed that you just d beat the streak. We ruin that if we have a 50-50 match. Facts. It's not my night, kid. Arn Anderson in the back of my head. I hope he understands the uh, f the influence he had on on my wisdom of, of this. It's not my night. Yeah. How do you showcase the enormity of that win? How do we not waste the Undertaker's streak? Which is, once again, I still think that streak should have probably been saved for a future Roman Reigns or somebody else. Because nevertheless, John Cena, I mean, Brock didn't need the streak to really, you know, become the champion. It was, it's Brock Lesnar. So obviously that was going to happen. Um, but I get what John's saying. If whoever beats the streak, they have this type of immunity to any 50-50 booking for a while, at least. Because you beat the streak. So you're on this supernatural high. <laughs> in the ring, character-wise, story-wise, line-wise. Anyone you get into the ring with, they really shouldn't have a chance with you. You beat the streak. What what are we what is there to debate? You know what I'm saying? It's not just Brock winning a match. It's all those matches that he had to lead up to losing. If I go out and have a 50-50 match and he just sneaks over, we wasted all that. Mm -hmm. But if you take that unbelievable feat with another unbelievable, unbelievable feat. Yep. Now we have passed the energy. And that is how you make someone. And then that someone can make others. And that's how the business works. You have to be able to work together. People, mm -hmm. oftentimes in life, this is not just business-wise. They're just, we got to see life through our own lens. And we got to, you know, self-preservation is a lot of what we do. But you can, you can survive and thrive by also being generous and being giving and working with others. Hey man, that was great. I love that video. And he he kind of he he pretty much broke it down as it should be in the wrestling business, man. He knew he just beat the streak not too long ago. It doesn't make sense for me to have this 50-50 match. Let's just go ahead and what will surprise everyone is him squashing me. Here's the thing. Beating a streak is one thing. It's legendary in itself. Squashing John Cena in the same year or just squashing John Cena, period. That's another upper echelon of, whoa, wait a minute. Because we know how much Vince loves John Cena. We know he's the company guy. There's no way he will get squashed. Hell, people thought John Cena was going to beat him. So they can tell John Cena is the guy that beat the, the, the guy that beat, you know, the Brock who beat the streak. I'm sure people thought that way. No one thought. And I remember watching this. I wasn't even really... I didn't honestly care about this main event. Honestly. I wasn't even really that excited about it. But I was like, whatever. I remember watching this live. And I was just like... Wait, what? I was so shocked and so confused and so surprised. Because I was like... They actually squashed him. Like, this is happening. I couldn't believe it. And the fans couldn't believe it. And it was just an, an, a crazy thing. And then that's when we knew, okay, yeah, he's about to be untouchable for a while. He, That was insane. And kudos to John Cena for being aware of that and be like, let's go with it. I'm all game. I'm good. It doesn't hurt John Cena getting squashed by Brock Lesnar. It doesn't. Because if you think about it, when he come full circle, when Brock first returned and John Cena beat him for that very first match, it's kind of fitting that he did the job for him here and pretty much was willing to take all them suplexes just to shock the audience and let people know things are changing. So, hey, comment down below. Let me know. How did you guys feel when you originally watched that match? Those who remember and was watching John Cena literally get destroyed before your eyes with damn near basically no offense. How did you guys feel? Were you guys shocked? Were you guys like happy were you guys disappointed sad and angry like what was your emotions when that originally happened but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k now i'm still going to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace